Are we alone in the universe? It's a question we've been asking ever since we figured out that there may be other worlds besides this one. The famous Drake equation tries to estimate the number of technological civilizations currently existing in our galaxy. It gives that number as a combination of astrophysical, biological and sociological factors, each of which narrows the range of stars in our galaxy that may have produced a surviving civilization. These factors include the rate of star formation in the Milky Way, the number of planets per star that could support life, the fraction of life-bearing planets that produce intelligent civilizations, and of those the fraction that develop technology that we might detect. And finally, you need to factor in the average lifetime of the typical advanced civilization. When Frank Drake formulated his equation in the early 60s, most of the factors going into it were hopelessly unconstrained. Drake's original calculations gave a range from 20 and 50 million current technological civilizations in the Milky Way, although he felt there were probably at least a thousand. Still, that is a huge range. At the low end, we're unlikely to ever see one, assuming they don't come to us. And at the high end, there should be civilizations within a hundred light years, which may have detected our own radio transmissions by now. In the last 50 years, we've learned a lot more about some of Drake's factors. There's some progress with the biological factors as we push the fossil record back closer and closer to the formation of the Earth, and we see just how quickly life arose here. We also have a slightly better understanding of abiogenesis, the initial evolution of life, and perhaps even the subsequent evolution of intelligence, although these are still a long way off giving us hard numbers. The sociological factors, and in particular the average lifespan of a technological civilization, are still the subject of wild guesswork. The area where we've made the most progress is in the astrophysical factors. We now have a very good idea of how many planets there are in the Milky Way that could potentially support life. The Kepler mission allowed us to estimate that our galaxy boasts something like 40 billion terrestrial planets in the Goldilocks zone of their parent star. So, 40 billion rocky worlds capable of supporting liquid water, which may be an essential ingredient for life. We call these habitable planets, although we have no idea how many are inhabited. Around 11 billion of those are Earth-like planets around Sun-like stars. With such a tight constraint on the astrophysics, but with the other factors being pretty hopeless, some researchers have decided to reframe the Drake equation. Astrophysicists Adam Frank and Woodruff Sullivan asked a different question. Instead of figuring out the number of technological civilizations still existing in the Milky Way, they asked the following. In the deeply pessimistic assumption that humanity is the only technological civilization in the entire known universe, what would that say about the biological and sociological factors in the Drake equation? In fact, they figured out for there to be only a 1% chance for one advanced civilization to have ever arisen in the history of the known universe, the chance for each habitable planet to produce such a civilization would need to be less than 2.5 by 10 to the power of minus 24. So less than a one in 400 billion trillion chance. That's so insanely small that we're forced to conclude that there must have been civilizations out there before. They also ran the numbers for the Milky Way. They got that in order for humans to be the only advanced civilization to have ever appeared in our galaxy, ever, then there would need to be only a 1 in 60 billion chance for any suitable planet producing something like us. That's still a very small number. If the true probability of producing civilizations is higher, then there have been and perhaps still are advanced species in our galaxy. Okay, so I have a challenge question for you. The best chance we have of finding other civilizations is if they're close. I want you to follow Frank and Sullivan's method, plus whatever other information you care to include to answer this. If humanity is the only technological civilization to have arisen on any habitable planet within 100 light years, how low would that probability of technological emergence need to be? What does this tell you about how close our nearest neighbors might be? To answer this, you should take a look at Frank and Sullivan's paper, 
link below, and check out some of the other useful info I'll leave in the description. Let's also do an extra credit question. Answer the above, but also the following. Consider Tabby's star, an otherwise normal looking F-type star 1500 light years away, which the Kepler mission revealed to be experiencing some weird dimming. Some people like to think this is evidence of some sort of alien megastructure eclipsing the star. Of course, it's almost certainly not, but just say it was. If we now say that those guys are the one advanced Dyson swarm building civilization in the entire Kepler sample, how close to us is the nearest such civilization not in that sample? What does your answer say about the likelihood of Tabby's star hosting such a civilization? Submit your answers with full work to pbsspacetime at gmail.com within two weeks of release of this video for a chance to win a Spacetime t-shirt. Make sure you use the subject line Galactic Civilization Challenge to be in the running because we filter by subject line. See you next week for a new episode of Spacetime. Thank <laughs> you.